Hello, hello. We are live. Hello and welcome back to uh, today's weekly Animatron webinar. Um, if you weren't here last time, I just want to give you a little uh, hint that we did start or sorry, restart our webinars last week. Uh, so our previous uh, little demonstration was on audio tips and tools, uh, little hints and tricks for uh, editing and cutting. Uh, um, and how to import and export. Hello, welcome back to uh, today's week. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, we had uh, an audio track, um, audio soundtrack that we brought in and clipped. Uh, we also had some sound effects that uh, we had cut and move around on our timeline. Uh, so if you are interested in audio, I uh, highly recommend going back uh, into our archive. Um, our webinar archive is on our YouTube channel. You can access the, uh, I believe it's a playlist uh, of our previous webinars. Um, since it's the only one in there right now, uh, it should be easy to find. Um, small introduction, if you don't know me already, I'm your personal animatron guru, Bryce. Uh, I will be guiding you through today's topic of interest. And uh, for, as of last week, we decided uh, we'll be discussing uh, the creation and editing of custom shapes um, using the animatron editor. <clears throat> now, custom shapes, a lot of people are like, yeah, we um, we already know how to make the shapes in the tool. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of uh, little hidden things uh, or maybe some uh, intermediate level, more advanced uh, ways to use uh, the animatron editor to make your shapes uh, really pop out and make some difficult ones, uh, which is kind of where I'm going to go into. Um, if you are brand new to Animatron um, and totally unfamiliar with our software, I do recommend that you go to animatron.com and uh, sign in, uh, create your free Animatron account, and you can start uh, clicking away and testing out our editor, as well as check out um, check out our tutorial playlists on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, a lot of helpful little uh, tidbits of information there on how to get started inside of the editor. Um, <clears throat> give me just a second here. All right, if you guys uh, need to know more about the interface, um, the user interface inside of the editor, the tools themselves, uh, the terminology, um, it all basically has the same uh, workflow, more or less uh, like Adobe Flash, Photoshop, uh, those familiar tools. Um, but if you are just looking to get started right away, I do highly suggest going to watch our official tutorials playlist. Uh, again, that's provided in this live stream description area. Uh, the little description below, you need, may need to click on it to open it up. There's a little hyperlink in there. It'll take you directly to the playlist. So you can watch all of our basic tutorials back to back. There's uh, a little more than 20, I believe, on there right now. So, so that should be uh, more than enough information to get you started. Um, and then for those... Um, for those of you with topic-related questions, uh, so I want to uh, point out that throughout this webinar demonstration, um, if you have topic-related questions, uh, type those into chat, and I'll try to answer those as I progress through the event. Um, I'll answer anything that's more or less relevant to the topic at hand, so anything having to do with the creation of shapes and uh, editing, um, editing curves, editing uh, shapes in general, I'll definitely answer that right away. Otherwise, if you have any off-topic questions, uh, something like, you know, how do I edit a path spline? How do I edit a, a motion path? Or um, how do I import this, that, and the other thing? Uh, if it's not relative to what I'm currently going through at the time, I'll ask that you please hold off on those questions until the live, uh, sorry, the open Q&A session at the tail end of this demonstration. Uh, that way we can just kind of pool all of our off-topic questions into one segment and uh, without, you know, really getting distracted or straying off of topic, um, I can answer those to the best of my ability then. So hold off to the end for those. 
And then with that said, uh, we can get started. So let me share my screen here with you. All right, we should be able to see my screens, the animatron landing page. And what I'm going to do is, since we are starting off fresh, I'm just simply going to go up to the top right corner here and click on Create Animation. Now, if anybody is signed in, um, this will create a brand new project on your uh, project library for you. Uh, if you are new to Animatron, I believe it will, uh, it will request you to log in uh, before you get to this uh, editor. So what we're greeted with here is our, our editor. And um, we're going over some relatively, relatively basic shapes. So the first thing I wanted to look at, uh, and a lot of people are kind of curious of, is how do I create my own custom uh, objects? Um, if you look through our marketplace, and you'll see that to the left-hand side here, uh, our marketplace has a really unique um, uh, ver a variety of different shapes that have been created. You have people, you have places, things, arrows, uh, icons, anything you can really think of, but how were those shapes created? I mean, there's a lot of very, uh, what appears to be difficult images here, and if they weren't created outside of Animatron, how could you create them inside of Animatron? Uh, one of the things that uh, a lot of people ask us about are speech bubbles. Um, being able to, uh, utilize a speech bubble to designate if a character or a creature or you know anything in your storylines or dialogue, uh, teaching tutorials, slideshows, what have you. Um, we don't currently have a full thorough uh, library of speech bubbles at the time, so I thought that might be something uh, that would be really good to cover on this note. So what I'm going to do is start out with the basic shape. Uh, for this case, I'm just going to use a square. So on my toolbar over here on the left side, I hold down left click over my circle, or sorry, my oval tool, and I can hold down that left click and drag over to the square. Um, it is the rectangle tool. Uh, and if you hover over these, again, it's always good to take a look at the little hints that show up. It gives you the uh, shortcut key of R. So if I wanted to easily or quickly access this rectangle tool, all I'd have to do is hit R on my keyboard. Uh, but for the sake of this, all you have to do is hold down left click over the Shapes tab and drag and uh, release your mouse click over the shape that you uh, F the shape that you want at the time. So right now we just want the rectangle tool. Uh, you'll see a number of options show up here and I'm not going to change those yet. I want to get the base shape down before I change any of these things later. Uh, so I'm just basically going to hold down left click over my canvas. Uh, drag and release, and you can get your basic shape. Uh, now, the reason that I said uh, I don't want to touch any of those initial parameters before I draw this out is because you really have no idea of what it's going to look like yet. Obviously, it's a rectangle. It's going to be as you draw it on the canvas. <clears throat> but there are some uh, little uh, cute tricks with these shapes that you can get uh, different, um, you know, you can extract different shapes from. Uh, in this case, you have uh, roundedness of the corners, so a rectangle tool uh, generally in most programs have this capability, and that's right here at the bottom uh, of my inspector panel is the roundness tab. Uh, so you can hold down left click over the slide bar and um, basically see that the corners are uh, beginning to uh, come together, uh, rounded edges. Um, so. The beginning of our speech bubble is just basically going to be this rectangle with the rounded outside corners. So I'll find something that looks pleasant, and I'll stop here, 39, 40. And uh, I'll just complete the, complete the shape as is. I can uh, choose my selection tool, click off of it, and I know that it, that is what it is. Um, and then you'll see down here on the layers panel, now this is a, a really good thing to get in the habit of doing is seeing where your shapes are being drawn out to. Um, because I opened a, a brand new project, I created this brand new project, it's literally fr uh, fresh, there's nothing else on it. Um, it's automatically going to start dumping my shapes into the layer one, uh, which becomes a combined layer. 
Now, at this point, I want to um, make sure that everybody knows that there's combined layers. There's two different kinds of essentially grouped layers. Um, this one you'll see that has a little triangular tab to the left side. See, it says show nested layers when you hover over it. Um, I can left click on that and drop down and it's like a file hierarchy in uh, Photoshop or Flash even. Uh, if you're just trying to organize a large mass of shapes, um, that's where combined layers come into play. Now, because there are no other uh, layers present and I just clicked and dragged my shape onto the, uh, onto the canvas, um, it automatically dumped that shape into my combined layer. And what you'll see is if I end up drawing any more shapes, and I'm just doing this for an example right now, um, I'll just choose my uh, star shape and I'll click and drag a couple. And if you've noticed my layers panel, it'll just completely uh, keep stacking those individual shapes underneath my layer one. And uh, if you're lucky, you'll see your little thumbnail will change here, so I'll make a bigger shape. Um, so this thumbnail here will change depending on how many shapes are uh, embedded in this combined layer. And I can always hide these. So this is where, you know, this comes into handy. Um, organizing your layers. If you have way too much stuff in your scene, you can always click on this little guy and combine layers still keeps everything on the same timeline. So you can keyframe all of these stars, you know, each one of your shapes that you've uh, drawn onto your canvas and keep it in one location. Um, now the difference here, uh, the difference here between a combined layer, right, and that's just what we went over here. I'm going to rename this so you understand uh, more about what I'm trying to show you. Call this combine layer one. And uh, I'll minimize that. <clears throat> and then I'll create a new layer. Um, here's a add layer button right here. So I'll just kindly do that. And let's see if it'll draw. So because it's on a new layer, it's going to keep creating the combine layer. But we don't want that. We want uh, I want to show you a grouped layer. Um, so what we can do is select all the layers that have been filtered down into this uh, combined layer. And I'm just going to hold down left click and drag them outside of the combined layer. You'll see layer one returns back to an empty uh, layer. And uh, it's not going to show you that it's a combined layer because there's nothing else in it right now. It's literally just an empty layer. I can't do anything with it. So I'm just going to delete it. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you the, the next point here as we're creating shapes. So because I had an initial empty layer uh, when we opened up our first project, it became our combined layer as we started drawing. If you had uh, another image, uh, let's say an image layer, an audio layer, anything other than uh, an initial blank layer or a combined layer selected on the layers panel, so we have star six selected right now. And if I start drawing, it's just going to place it right on our layers panel. Uh, like we're just drawing out each individual shape the way we want to hold them um, separately from one another. So these aren't being drawn into a combined layer now. Uh, if you ever run into this situation where you keep drawing your shapes and you see your layers panel filling up like this, um, you can either do one of two things is select all of those shapes that uh, that you've wanted to keep together and uh, look right here. It's this fourth button from the left, combine layers. So this will do exactly the same thing as our first combine layer. It will stack them all together and I can reveal them and uh, keyframe them along their own timelines and still have those organized in my top layer. Um, but the difference we're looking for right now is, I'll just go back, I'll control Z, and there we go, is our group layers. So the second part of this is group layers um, essentially put everything onto their own timeline. They are completely separate from this main canvas. So by doing this, I just selected all of my stars here. Um, you can either right click or hit F8 on your uh, keyboard. Um, just for the sake of showing you from the context menu, I right click on any one of these selected stars and I'll hit group. All right, so group now creates this group layer. And 
And let me rename this group layer. Uh, and the main difference is that you can see by the thumbnail, you can see a bunch of little blue speckles on here. I know it's pretty difficult to see the thumbnail uh, from this um, from this resolution. Uh, however, uh, with group layers, if you hover over the thumbnail, you can click on the thumbnail and where it says edit group, right? You hover over it and it gives you a little indicator that you can edit this group layer and you left click on it and you can see on our canvas, the canvas has completely disappeared, which means that we've essentially isolated this group layer. And the point of showing you this is because when you have created so many combined objects, when you have taken all these, um, these shape elements and pushed them into one shape, uh, so let's say I wanted to have my star be something very particular. This is uh, a cutout shape for a banner, uh, for a logo, right? I know it's probably not the best shape to be logo happy, but... So let's just say this is our custom shape, and everything is grouped together. And you'll see here on our breadcrumbs, uh, we are still inside of group layer one. To get out of this, I can just click on scene one, right? And that takes us back to the top. Uh, now you'll see our selected group layer on our canvas. I'll just center the registration here. It acts as if it is one solid shape. So the same thing that we get from our marketplace shapes, these real complex shapes. Uh, let me see if I can find anything particular. Uh, there you go. Two cats and a heart. So the way that these basic shapes appear uh, when you select them, right, it's obviously one, two, three separate shapes, but they're technically grouped shapes. This one happens to be uh, an SVG or PNG uh, imported, um, and you cannot break these apart. In fact, I don't believe these can be broken apart, but, oh, no, I just proved myself wrong. <laughs> okay, so the PNGs and everything coming from the uh, library can be broken apart. And I guess for the sake of uh, showing you that little task, I'll undo here so that goes back to the way it was. Um, if some of these shapes don't come into Animatron and they don't have individual layers or they're connected in some way, they won't break apart the same way. Um, so break apart is if you have multiple objects, you can see now I can click each one of the, um, these heart and cat shapes. Uh, I'm going to control Z until they were whole. Wants to. There we go. Okay, so you have your combined shape, right? That's just like these guys right here. Uh, we can consider these grouped layers. Um, on our Layers tab, because the item was brought over from our Marketplace, uh, it hasn't applied the shape to its own group layer. It's just an image. It, that's just what it is. Uh, the group layer that we've custom created, we can always go back in by clicking on this thumbnail, uh, moving some things around, and you know, going back to scene one, and now they've changed. Um, but on the topmost layer, right, we can still see the canvas. Um, I'm able to move this object as one piece. And it's not distracting on my layers panel. Uh, it's very clean. Everything is kept together. I can see by the thumbnail that all those shapes are uh, connected into one layer. And just by keeping this group um, tag in the name, uh, in the layer name, um, I can just you know reassure myself that this is a grouped layer. Uh, so another good pointer there is if you ever create group layers, just make sure you keep that group tag, um, you know, stars group, right? So anytime you create a new combined object or a new complex object like this, um, make sure you keep that little group tag in the end there. It's just a good indicator to you and anybody else who's working on this project that that is a group layer. Uh, also, for combined layers, it should be obvious because of this little tab, but who knows, sometimes people, uh, you know, tend to look over uh, that little triangle there. It's very easy to get lost. 
Um, so your combined layers, your group layers. All right, now that I've gotten through that whole spiel, <laughs> I'll go up here to uh, my cats, and I just want to show you this because it was a little fun fact I didn't realize I could still do until now. Um, if you right-click on any one of these shapes, and I'm going to go as far as saying that you can do that with most of these marketplace items. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to find uh, another, maybe this one. Yeah, it looks like it's separated in the middle. Anytime you see that uh, your shapes might be separated, it's possible you might be able to break them apart and separate them yourselves. So all you'd have to do is right click on that shape that you dragged in from the marketplace. And there's a little um, button down here called break apart. And this essentially breaks all of the shapes into their own individual uh, pieces. So there you go. So now I can uh, pull the cats apart and reshape them uh, edit them how I want. The hearts are all separate now. So it's a good way to uh, start uh, clipping your unique shapes apart or pulling them, uh, pulling them apart so that you can ultimately create your own unique shapes. All right, so now I can separate all these. Cool. So we've covered breaking apart, uh, the difference between combine and group layers. Now we can get into the meat and potatoes and finish off making our little speech bubble here. So I didn't mean to get carried away with that, but it actually is a very important piece of creating custom shapes because uh, you really do need to make sure you're organizing uh, these shapes before you get lost um, trying to create them. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking for, let's say, you know, the little triangle that, that uh, pops out and it points at the uh, the person or thing that is uh, projecting the speech bubble. Uh, so I'm going to try to create a triangle. Uh, there's one really quick and easy way to create our triangles, and that's with this polygon shape tool. And you can see you can hover over it, and it shows you the shortcut key G. So I'll hold down left click on my toolbar. I'll drag over to the polygon tool and let go. And there we go. We've got our polygon. Uh, now, the great thing about this <clears throat> is our initial shapes, when you drag and uh, uh, create these onto your canvas, um, it keeps all of uh, your base options for, the, for creating the initial shape. Now, why I chose polygon, right, a five-solid shape, uh, five-sided uh, shape to create a triangle, is uh, simply because you can choose how many edges are attached to your polygon or how many edges uh, construct your polygon. And you can find that by selecting the object, and you'll see it in your Options tab. you see Options here. Um, and this is basically how many sides there are, how many points. So I'm going to bring this down to three and hit Enter. There you go. Uh, simply creating a triangle in one foul swoop with the basic uh, polygon tool. Easy as that. So now I can get into placement. Uh, hold down left click on your little pinwheel uh, rotation handle here. And, you know, you can set this up. <clears throat> I'm going to line it up with my box. Um, maybe resize it. And I'll put it in, uh, put it in one of these corners. Now, the beauty of having uh, two separate shapes here uh, one thing that I used to struggle with in uh, Adobe Flash all the time probably wasn't much of a struggle, but um, at the time was not such an easily editable thing, is that now I have the capacity of just selecting this triangle and repositioning it to wherever I need it to be. Uh, that way, if I ever wanted to go in here and change the way this dialog box, this um, uh, speech bubble, uh, pointing to the direction of the character that is speaking, uh, you would have, in Flash, you'd have to go find another speech bubble that possibly had, you know, that direction to it, or spend quite a bit of time uh, trying to uh, pull vertices so that the triangle was pointing in that direction. And so here, what I can do is essentially uh, just position it wherever I need it to be. And because it's a separate object, it makes it that much easier to, um, 
to have our characters actually saying something. So let me find uh, let me find a character here. All right, Mr. Businessman. Um, and like I said before, we have combined layers and we have group layers. So what you'll notice is if I was just to click on this rectangular part, it's only going to select the rectangle. So if I wanted the triangle and the rectangle to stay together as one speech bubble, I would have to group these layers. Otherwise, all you have to do is click on the combined layer itself, and you'll see it highlighted in your layers panel, and then move it as one solid piece. Um, the only issue is when you're doing this and you start to resize your shapes, uh, you can see that the scale of the triangle and the rectangle are completely um, completely out of scale. You'll have to do a bit more work to get the you know perfect roundedness in the rectangle and uh, get that triangle back to its original state. Um, so what you can do <clears throat> is essentially move these two shapes together. Um, I'll just uniform scale. Um, for anybody who doesn't know when they're uh, changing the scale of their shapes, you just hold down shift and you left click and drag the corners and it's a uniform scale. So it keeps, uh, it maintains its exact dimension and uh, you can just kind of downscale it to fit where you're trying to put it. Now we have our, our little speech bubble here. Now obviously we can rearrange this so it looks like he's actually saying it. There we go. Um, there you go. So a, a basic speech bubble with a combined layer. Now, if I was done combining all of these um, real complex shapes to create this uh, speech bubble asset, um, I'll, I'll make it a little bit more complex for you in a second here. I just want to uh, tell you where that difference in the combined layer is. Uh, so if I wanted to make this one whole piece and I'm completely satisfied with its positioning, uh, how it looks, what the text reads on the inside, uh, to finalize it, and this is just something that I have grown habit of doing because it's easier to just click and drag one item uh, on the canvas than it is to go collect all of the items um, that belong in that combined layer. Uh, what, what you can do is left click on your combined layer and group the layer. Um, right click, group, and now it will become your combined layer group essentially. Um, we can rename this. All right, so this is now my, my actually, let me bring the speech bubble group. All right, so speech bubble group, it's as easy as left clicking and dragging that whole piece. Uh, if you look at this little uh, phantom box that uh, shows up behind it, you'll see that it is actually two pieces. Um, so that is something to get in the habit of looking at this little uh, faint, um, uh, what, what would you call it, a ghosted shape from where you dragged it from. Uh, it gives you a good idea of how many pieces construct this one shape. Um, so again, always get into this uh, habit of observing you know, each one of your sections, your layers panel, uh, clicking, dragging your combined or group layers. Uh, just make sure that everything is organized. So basically, now that we have a combined layer, I can animate this whole piece as if it's one object. But if I wanted to just animate a piece inside of it, I could click on that little uh, thumbnail tab to edit my group layer. And now I can choose my uh, triangle, my little you know, my uh, indicator of where my speech bubble is pointing to. And I can change the rectangle, and if I had provided some text in here, and I'll just do that real quick. Uh, add my text. Hold on. There it is. Okay. Speech. Bubble. And let's center it. 
So we have my speech bubble. You know, I'll give it some some wacky font. And I'll position it here. And generally, when you see a speech bubble <clears throat> in anything, um, you're moreover looking for the contrast in it so that the, the text itself stands out. Um, it's the one thing that your eyes are supposed to be trained to because it is somebody saying something important, something that you're trying to uh, follow along with. Um, so we can go in and select these individual shapes. Um, now, another uh, cool pointer here is that if you know that you've drawn all of these shapes, um, that you've created them directly, and they're all individual shapes, you can select multiples and change their color all at the same time. You don't have to go into each one of these shapes and change them at the same time. Um, you know, click on them individually. You can just uh, shift select uh, all of the shapes that you want to change the color to. And if you see if they're two different colors, it'll just leave you uh, with a question mark icon um, on our fill thumbnail. Um, but all you have to do is simply click on our triangle. Uh, and I was talking about contrast before, so simply I'm going to turn this into a white background speech bubble. And there we have a white background speech bubble. And we should have some level of contrast because if the speech bubble is showing up on top of other color, uh, we want something as a border or as a contrasting border. Uh, so what I can do is um, shift select both of my shapes <clears throat> and I can simply duplicate them. Uh, so there's two ways to duplicate. You can uh, either right click on the layers themselves and copy and then paste in place or you can just hover over uh, oops, or you can just hover over this little uh, duplicate layer button here Control D is uh, duplicate your current layer selections. Uh, so I'll just click on this and it will create copies. You'll see copy added to the name. Um, and the reason I did this is because it puts it in the same exact place as the other two shapes were. And I can simply go into each one of my original shapes and I'm selecting the original shapes because they're behind uh, our new copies. Our new copies are the white ones. Um, the white colored ones. Let's see, polygon. Yeah, just call this white. And shape. Yeah, we'll just call it triangle. Triangle white. And then these original ones will be polygon black. Because that's the border color I'm going to be applying to them. So shape black and polygon black, technically this is triangle black. Triangle black. Okay, so I can select these. I'm going to zoom in so you can get a better look at what I'm doing here. <clears throat> now, I want to make an exact outline border of uh, the original shape here. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is centered. Uh, you'll see that the center of my triangle uh, registration is highlighted black in this uh, little chart. And I can see here that it is in the exact center. Uh, so what I can do is hold down uh, shift, hold down left click, and drag it larger. So it's a uniform scale. Um, because they're both white, you don't see anything yet. So what I'm going to do is change these to black. Right, right, these are my two black layers. Change them to black. You'll see that now I have a black outline uh, for my triangle. And now I can do the same one. Oops, I named these vice versa by accident. But, you know, it happens. Um, <clears throat> keep my center registration for my rectangle shape. Make sure it's centered and hold down shift and click and drag. And now I can create my um, bordered outline for my speech bubble and give it a little bit more character. Uh, so this is something where you can really start playing uh, with the complexity of your shapes. Um, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of, a uh, little bit more character in 
uh, rotating the border so that it looks like there's a couple breaks in it. Here, how about this? Um, I can even click and drag it so it looks like it's uh, more of a bolded highlight. It gives it more of a three-dimensional appearance. Uh, I can even do it this way so that the bigger uh, bolder highlight is on the left side. It's almost like uh, you can direct your uh, audience's eye to where the speech bubble is located from the character it's being delivered from. So that's all I did. I literally just uh, duplicated those two shapes, uh, clicked and dragged them, uh, chain, uh, reoriented them, changed the background color for them to black, and uh, made sure that they're underneath uh, the original two white color, uh, the uh, white shapes. And then, you know, obviously my text field is right here in the center, and I can change that anytime uh, inside of my uh, parameters. <clears throat> so if you ever wanted to uh, scale this object, uh, your best bet would be to rescale it uniformly, uh, which means going back here in the canvas, holding down Shift. I'm going to make sure. Ah, here's uh, another really cool uh, point about speech bubbles. Uh, so speech bubbles are directed from uh, a point of being delivered. So right now they're being delivered by this... Uh, by this character, business character here. If you left-click on our um, central uh, pivot point, you'll see it highlights yellow uh, because I'm on animation. If you're on design, it would highlight gray. Um, but I'm on animation right now. So it highlights, and then you can hold down left-click and drag it to the very point um, of where the speech bubble originates. This way, you can actually rotate it from the character point of view. So if you wanted to move these objects together, these two objects, uh, the character and the speech bubble, now you can just shift, select them, move them around. And when I go back to my speech bubble, um, I can still rotate it to fit into you know, the next area that I'll be using it. Um, and then simply, if I wanted to duplicate this, um, I would have to break it apart. Um, if I want to duplicate it and change it into another uh, specific uh, shape, I could right-click, uh, ungroup, because it is a grouped layer, and everything that was in that group will spill out onto your uh, layers panel, so just be sure that there's not too many layers to uh, try to organize through here, or try to uh, sift through. So we only have five layers, that's good. Um, but what this does for us is now we can change it on this level, uh, reselect them uh, and then regroup them. Um, so that's a basic speech bubble shape. I know nothing way too impressive, uh, but it should get you off the ground on creating your basic shapes. Um, so I know I'm running over time here. It's about 38 minutes in. Uh, but I want to cover something um, <clears throat> that is basically a more advanced use for custom shapes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we can use what Animatron calls the uh, Pathfinder tool. Um, so if you look up here at the top right, there's this little uh, you know shaded square inside of a, a highlighted square, and that's our little Pathfinder icon. So if you click on this Pathfinder, um, I don't know if anybody is really familiar with the term Booleans, but that's essentially what these uh, shapes do, these cutouts. Um, so you can select multiple shapes. Uh, Boolean is, you know, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, so depending on how many shapes you have selected at the time, uh, let me do this again with the stars because this would be a best, uh, best case scenario for showing you what this actually does. And I'll make a circle, or oval rather, and make a square. And I'm just going to color these different so we know which is which. Purple, blue. Right, so what I could do here with our Booleans tool, and uh, let's say that I had a specific shape uh, that I wanted to cut out from a reference image. Um, you could essentially use this as a cookie cutter tool. So first things first is 
we need to make the cookie cutter. We need to make the shape that we're cutting out of the main shape that we want to use. Um, <clears throat> so let's just say, for instance, this is the shape that we wanted to use, and I want to create this cookie cutter. Um, let's use this as an overlap. Some more interesting angles in here. <clears throat> and uh, what I could do is uh, choosing the first shape is our uh, circle, or sorry, our oval, and then selecting the second shape by holding down shift and selecting it. Uh, you can also just select the layers, works the same way. And then going up to our Pathfinder tool, um, so we can uh, decide which one of these we want to do. So there's a union, uh, there's a divide, <clears throat> uh, subtract, and multiply. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we can figure out which one of these works. Uh, it's always good to test out what you're doing first. Um, honestly, in any case where you have no idea what the end result is going to be, save. <laughs> uh, in this case, Animatron uh, saves automatically for you. But if you want to save this iteration, you can always go up to your main menu, project, and download as AM file. This basically takes a snapshot of all of the current uh, positions and animations and everything that exists on this project right now. So anything that you create after this point, you can always use this uh, to recall an old file. Um, so that's a good habit to get into also. Uh, download as AM files basically creates a snapshot of this project for you. Um, if not, and you're uh, adventurous like me, uh, you can just go ahead and try it. I'm going to click on one of these shape unions. Uh, which one was that? All right, that was uh, multiply, I believe. So it multiplied the circle onto the star, and it left me with this little uh, lower chunk. Uh, so for the sake of undoing and finding out what actually happened, I can control Z back to before that happened. Um, and then let's try it again here with the square and the star. So I select the square, uh, square first, the star second. Sorry, I need to shift select. Square first, star second, and go in here, and let's try, uh, let's union them. Let's bring them together. All right, so it's created a single shape, right? This is just kind of how um, our marketplace items came in. So you know it's two separate shapes because I just showed uh, the union happen. Uh, but according to uh, Animatron now, these are uh, one individual shape. Uh, and then we can edit these shapes as we go. So it's basically taken the first selection that we made, which was our rectangle, and told the second selection to merge to the first one. So uh, layer order or object order uh, plays a very important role in using uh, these Pathfinder uh, Booleans tools. Um, so now that we have our custom shape, right? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's nothing spectacular. Uh, in fact, let's see if we can make this a little bit more interesting. And I'll select my first shape again, select the circle, or sorry, the oval, go to my Pathfinder and Union, and we'll make one big happy shape here. Uh, however, you'd like to interpret that. Um, so now we have one shape. <clears throat> Maybe there's a couple of angles or points in our shape that you're not too happy with. Um, this is kind of where I've been leading to the whole time, is that uh, you can directly edit any one of your combined shapes. This is one shape. It's all connected. Uh, you can select your direct selection tool, which is this uh, essentially highlighted uh, cursor here. Um, and if you look at our shape now, I'll zoom in so that you can see how this is being affected. Um, now you can see all of the individual points that created the original shapes, and it keeps it real clean, real basic, because we use these uh, primitive shapes. Uh, if you do end up with something uh, that has way too many uh, vertices, these little uh, points here, um, you can always smooth out the shape, and I don't recommend this, uh, because obviously we've just taken all of that hard work from combining them and turned them into mush. So, <laughs> so you can always smooth out all of these connected shapes. 
if you ever had way too many of these points in there. Um, and that's only in specific cases, but uh, so when all else fails, you know, don't use smoothness too often, but if it's uh, an oval shape that obviously looks like an oval and looks like it'll maintain the shape, you can always try smoothing it and see if that uh, eliminates a bulk of these points. But individually, <clears throat> because I have my direct selection tool on, um, I can just click and drag each one of my points uh, to redefine uh, the positions that they're currently in. I'm literally just left clicking on each point. Uh, you'll see as I go through each point, it highlights the point that I'm moving, and it also highlights the two uh, connecting points uh, that are coming from it or going to it. Uh, and then along with our uh, point deformation are these little hailing... Um, <laughs> I don't know what it's about to call them. Um, <laughs> these little handles. Uh, so you have these, uh, what are called Bezier, uh, Bezier handles. Um, and you can reposition these individually for the curvature. So if you had any specific curves that you're trying to match to uh, a reference image or um, any particular reason you'd need to uh, curve your shapes, you can just use the uh, Bezier handles. Um, now, one thing about editing your shapes, uh, especially... Uh, specifically editing your curves themselves. So what we're doing right here is editing our curves or our points. Um, if you hold down any one of the combinations of control or shift uh, or alt even, um, this will change effectively how uh, this point reacts. Uh, so I'm holding down alt and clicking on, uh, on the point itself and it's going to flatten out my Bezier handles or it's going to reset them. Uh, straighten them essentially. Um, now that I've done that, I can click and drag on my Bezier handles. Um, and as I'm clicking and dragging, you can either hold Shift or Control or Alt. And any combination of these will give you uniform, non uniform, uh, individual, uh, basically break. You can break by holding Shift and clicking on the Bezier handle. Uh, so get in a habit of using um, this editing method because this really gives you the most um, the most accurate or most control over your shape construction. Uh, so that's just kind of the last thing I wanted to show you other than uh, if you need more points, uh, you can always double click on a line, right? You'll see this little um, this little dot appear across one of these edges. And wherever that is, you double click, it will add that, that uh, point in there for you to change later on. Uh, so if you need to add points, you can double click. If you need to remove them, hover over uh, a, point in a point that exists on the curve uh, and just double click again, and that will completely remove them. Uh, if you need to straighten out your edge, so right now we have this big bulge here, you can hold down Alt and left click and it will flatten uh, between the two uh, points that it's between. Um, or you can just simply hold down left click on an edge and drag it. All right, and this is the uh, uh, best manipulation that we have so far is just being able to simply grab an edge and move it. Um, so this will essentially affect uh, the in and out Bezier points from uh, the point before and the point after. So if you're to look at this, it changes it for us automatically. There's a good visual representation of what that actually does. <clears throat> and uh, just make sure that you're not um, breaking any of the initial shapes that you're trying to hold on to. Um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of shape I'm making here. <laughs> I'm not trying to go for anything particular. Uh, let's just call this a flying fish. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's essentially editing. Um, creating custom shapes. I showed you a little bit about the uh, Pathfinder editor um, Boolean tool. Uh, creating a, a simple speech bubble, and you can do this with any combination of shapes. Uh, and then that uh, merged together with, uh, with our combined layers and with our group layers um, ultimately gives you the most power over creating your own shapes. Um, so let's just say for the, the sake of this that this is a fish, you know, not the best fish I've ever drawn. 
Uh, and he has a speech bubble coming out, and he's uh, basically saying speech bubble. And we want to keep this whole asset together, our goofy looking fish and our speech bubble. We can uh, simply shift select all the layers. Um, you can hold down shift and drag, or you can shift and click uh, from the current selection. And this selects all the shapes, all of the uh, texts, um, and all of the layers that you want combined into one object. And uh, what I'll do is, like I said, by habit, I want to make sure that I uh, group these layers together. Um, it's just the easiest way to keep everything organized and you know where it is. And you can always ungroup them later <clears throat> if you need to uh, change individual portions of it. Um, so the last thing I'm going to show you here is saving this to our library. Uh, so before we save anything to your library, you want to get in the habit of uh, renaming your layers. <clears throat> and the layer, um, the layer name that I'm about to type in here directly corresponds with the layer name that, um, sorry, with the uh, object name that you see in the marketplace. So I'll call this uh, Goofy, oop, let's try spelling that right, Goofy Fish. Speech bubble guy, a goofy fish speech bubble guy. Um, in order to save this to our own personal library, uh, which means that we can uh, reuse it later, I'll click on my uh, my market and project library tab down here at the bottom, and then at the very top of our marketplace, you'll see project library in a tab. Uh, so this basically takes you from all of your market selections, which are you know, all of our pre-designed uh, assets for you to use. Um, or you can save your own. And this is the really the power uh, that Animatron gives you is that you can now uh, create your own assets and save them for later use. So now that I've grouped my uh, shapes together, my goofy fish with the speech bubble, I've named it. Um, I, all I have to do is select the asset <clears throat> or select the object. And you'll see the thumbnail appear at the top left of our uh, project library with a little plus symbol. And if we click on this, it just adds it to our project library. And since there's nothing else in here, it doesn't look very populated at the moment. Um, but you can always uh, drop files here as well. So if you see this little drag and drop uh, box. So if you had assets outside of this, so here's, um, I have a folder from my computer open. And I just wanted to drag one of these uh, items on here. You can drag and drop them. It will place it inside of your project library. And then you can simply drag and drop this to your um, drag and drop this to your canvas. And there you go. So this was a PNG image, just in case you were wondering. That's why there's no border around it. It's transparent background. Um, so you can always uh, drag and drop your PNG images. Uh, if you have JPEG images, that's fine, but they're always going to have borders. Um, any way uh, to save your assets, you can do that here in the project library. Um, this is really for reuse, uh, which means that I've saved it now. I want to reuse it later. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of my paint splash here. Uh, let's say I wanted to create a second uh, Goofy Fish talking, you know, speech bubble, whatever. Uh, I can always look at it in my project library, drag and drop it. And it tries to bring it in at the original size. And um, what you can do is because you have a duplicate, I can go in here and change. Let's just say we're going to change the color. Um, so now I have my uh, blue fish and red fish. It's getting very Dr. Susie here. Um, now you can change uh, anything about this new asset, but it stays one whole asset. So uh, this is a very good way to create multiple um, multiple objects, you know, stars in the sky twinkling. Uh, and these objects will save with their animations attached to them. OK, so now that I've almost talk for a straight hour, <laughs> I'd like to uh, open up the channel to anybody who has questions. Um, since we're at the end of the demo for creating custom shapes, you can ask away anything that you have on your mind uh, that you've been currently struggling with uh, through your animatron usage. 
um, please just type it into chat and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, so in the meantime, while I'm waiting for uh, any of you to come up with your specific questions, um, I'd like to just say again, uh, if you have any, uh, if you have any questions, anything that you feel like you uh, couldn't possibly figure out yourself, uh, please do check out our uh, tutorial playlist, um, and that can be found in uh, this webinar demo's uh, description area below the video. Uh, you should probably just click on that, and there is a link uh, that will take you to the full tutorial playlist, the full official tutorial playlist for Animatron, and that gives you all of your basics from uh, custom shape creation, uh, audio, uh, audio editing, importing, um, all the goodies, all the real uh, basic stuff that you should know going into uh, using the software. Um, but it's all very essential, all very simple. Um, you just have to give yourself some, some practice time to get used to uh, the workflow and just kind of create your own workflow. Um, and another thing is, uh, for most of you people who, now that I bring up workflow, um, for you guys out there who are really into uh, streamlining your projects, who really like to develop faster, uh, it's really good to uh, look into our main menu here uh, at the top left, and you go down to Help, and you'll find Show Shortcuts. So uh, as you know, as I go through our demos, I always uh, try to point out which shortcut keys open up which tools. Uh, and this is really the quickest way to find out all of the main uh, shortcut keys in a short period of time. So this gives you a basic uh, keyboard list of uh, what you can do with you, you know, your tools, your object management, your functions, uh, project management, objects and layers, moving, animation. All that stuff can be found here. Uh, it's all current. Um, really, if, and, and if it's between uh, PC and Mac, uh, the basic difference is that your command key is your control key. Um, so if you ever see command plus something, and that's the, the shortcut key, just change it to control plus something. Um, and with that said, I'm not seeing any questions yet, so uh, I'll just wrap this up and say thank you very much for attending our, uh, our second um, iteration of the renewal of our weekly animatron webinars. Uh, I hope you've taken away a good amount of information from today's a little demo and um, <clears throat> before I go I'd like to just tell you uh, that if you have any um, any suggestions for next week's topic and I really uh, want to get a lot of feedback from you guys because these webinars are geared towards uh, helping you guys figure out your own problems uh, while using or your own issues while using animatron uh, so if you have a solution uh, sorry if you have um, an issue that needs to be resolved um, send uh, send that uh, topic of choice uh, to feedback, and I'll type this here on my screen, feedback at animatron.com. Um, just make sure that the, uh, the header title of your email uh, mentions webinar in it. And make sure that the body of your email uh, suggests what topic you'd like me to cover next week. Um, otherwise, I'll just kind of uh, relay onto something current, uh, something that I feel hasn't been uh, added or um, has not been uh, extremely documented yet as far as our basic functionality. Most of it is. Uh, sometimes I find some fun little, um, uh, fun little topics to cover, and uh, I'll just go with that. Uh, so I really do want you guys to send in your topics. Uh, and with that, thank you again for showing up for today's webinar. And uh, look for us next week, next Wednesday at 11 a.m., uh, where we'll have a new topic and uh, hopefully chosen by you guys. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.